Hi, Stephanie C. Harper, publisher of Career Magazine, and I'm answering a few of your uh, questions today by video response. So one of the questions that come that came in is, um, <clears throat> I need to hire someone, and I'm not sure if I should hire someone full-time or part-time. Can you give me some advice? Well, in order for me to give you um, the advice that you're actually looking for, uh, I'd have to sit down with you and find out a little bit more about your budget, the type of position, what you need to have done, et cetera, et cetera. But let me just kind of briefly, for the sake of this video, give you a few scenarios to um, consider as it relates to whether or not you should make <coughs> excuse me, a full-time hire or a part-time higher. Now, what typically happens with some of my clients who are um, startups and entrepreneurs is that they immediately think, oh, the best thing I can do is hire someone at $10 an hour. That way I have an extra person in the office and I have, you know, I can get 40 hours worth of work from them, et cetera, et cetera. Well, one of the things that I advise uh, my clients to do is actually to start out with a part-time employee with a little bit higher of a salary. And the reason being is because you actually come out a little bit cheaper. What people typically do is look at the $10 an hour versus maybe um, $15 an hour. And they say, well, it's more expensive. Well, not really. When you sit back and do the calculations, you'll find that it's actually better to hire a part-timer with a higher salary and with a better skill set than it is to hire a full-timer with a lower salary and a limited skill set. So let me kind of break this down for you quickly. If you were to hire someone at $10 an hour, 40 hours a week, um, that's going to cost you a base of $20,800 a year. Well, there's a few things that you haven't factored into that figure. So the employee... Um, you're going to have to do some training with them, which when you equate that into dollars and figures, it's going to be about another $5,000 of training that you will have to give to that employee who has a limited skill set. Because you have to remember that you will have to expend your time, which is, of course, not calculated at a $10 an hour rate. So you have to think about uh, the training that you will give to them. So let's just say that 25% of their time and salary is going to go to training. So that average is out to about $5,000 a year. And then again, I talked about your time that's expended and your hourly rate clearly is not $10 an hour. So let's just round that figure out to be say, maybe it, it will take about $3,400 of your time that you have to pull away from your core business to work with this employee who has limited skill set. And then if you offer that person benefits, that's going to be about 15.5% of their salary of $20,800 a year, which is an additional $3,224. And then, of course, you have your taxes, which can be anywhere from 28 to 32%. For the sake of this video, I did the 32%, which is $14,000 that you, the employer, has to pay for um, your employee. And then, of course, if you give them some paid time off, let's say two weeks at $10 an hour, of course, it's $800. And then, of course, you would have had to get a temp, possibly, to fill in for them during the two weeks that they were out. So that's an additional. And let's say, for instance, you are saying that you want to pay um, you know, that same $10 rate. Well, if you're working with a staffing agency, their markup is going to be about 30%. And that means that you'll be paying $15 to $18 an hour for the same work that you're already paying someone $10 an hour to do. But the long and short of it, if you're looking at the $15 an hour figure, that is an additional $1,200. Now, when you add all of those figures together, what you're actually spending for your $10 an hour employee is more like $48,000. <laughs> So you would be paying $48,000 a year for your $10 an hour employee with benefits. So it's not just the $2,080 or $20,800 a year that you've calculated because you said, okay, I'm going to pay them $10 an hour. 
Now let's do another scenario where you selected a uh, candidate who um, is has a stronger and a better skill set and they're asking for $15 an hour as opposed to the $10 an hour figure. Well, what do you pay them for? You pay them $15 an hour at 20 hours a week. At 20 hours a week, you probably won't be paying into any benefits. And they have a higher skill set, so you can reduce everything that I've just given you figures for. You can reduce the 25% of your time that you have to spend training. You can reduce also your time that's taken away from your core business that you have to spend to teach them things that they will already know if they have a higher skill set. You can scratch the 15% for benefits. You can, um, you still have to pay the taxes, um, but you can scratch the two weeks of paid overtime. And, uh, you know, you still may have to pay, um, well, actually, you wouldn't have to pay the temp. Be well, you have to pay it, but it kind of equals out because you wouldn't be paying your actual employee. You would be paying the temp. But what I'm saying, when it's an actual $10 an hour employee, you're paying their vacation plus the temp. If a person is a part-timer with you or a contractor with you and you're just paying them a straight $15, then when there's no benefits involved. So if they're not there, they just don't get paid. So that $15 an hour could be paid to someone else to step in for them for that two-week period. So I hope that that um, is a little bit... Well, I know that it's beneficial to you, so I, I can't say that I hope it's beneficial to you, but um, just consider that if you should hire at a lower rate and it's a full-time employee, you have more expenses than you would for a part-time employee with a higher hourly rate of pay. All right, so Stephanie C. Harper with Career Magazine, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.